Having looked at the VTC of the CMOS inverter, now it's time to derive the noise margins in detail. So let's take a look at the VTC again. It uh, consists of the NMOS being cut off all the way up to V threshold N. Then it turns on in the saturation regime, then it becomes ohmic. The PMOS does exactly the opposite as, it, uh, as its gate voltage decreases from VDD down to ground. Now, the region of operation where the PMOS is saturated lies above, uh, lies below this line, and the region of operation where the NMOS is saturated lies above this line, and thus there is a range in the middle where both are saturated, and we found in the previous video that this range is actually a single value for V input. Now, it's really important to note the regions of operation of the two transistors on the VTC, because it really helps when we uh, try to obtain important points on the VTC. There are three important points. The first is VM, the logic threshold, which is the point where V output is equal to V input. And it's obtained by intersecting the line V output equals V input, Y equals X, with, with the VTC. And so it's going to be this point specifically. So this is VM, uh, which is the point at which V output is equal to V input. And so Y is equal to X at this point. The other two points are the point where V, uh, where the input points where the slope of the VTC is equal to minus one. The lower of these input values is V input low, and the higher is V input high. We can see qualitatively that the noise margins for the CMOS inverter are actually quite high, because V output high is VDD, so this is V output high. V output, v output low is zero volt, so this is the output low. So there is no headroom uh, wasted on either side. And we can also see that the transition region, the high gain region where the slope is greater than one, is actually quite small. This is because the value of v, up, v input high is low and the value of V input low is high. And so this is the transition region and it's a relatively narrow region of the VTC. Now we have to devise ways in which we can find the values of Vm, V input low and V input high. And so we have only one equation, IN is equal to IP. And then when we try to find important points on the VTC, we have to do two things, figure out the region of operation. And if we have to, we also have to substitute with any specific properties that, uh, that, um, you know, that are special to this point. So when we look at VM, the logic threshold, uh, the straight line V output is equal to V input, has a unity slope, and this parallel to the two lines that delineate uh, the difference between saturation and, uh, and, uh, and ohmic regime for the NMOS and PMOS. So it lies between them because it is parallel to them, right? And so because it lies between them, it has to be in the sat-sat regime. It's where both are sat. It lies in the area where both are saturated. So we use the sat-sat regions of operation. And we also keep in mind that this point is specific by the fact that V output is equal to V input is equal to Vm. And so when we write the sat sat equation, if we need to use this, this property, we use it. So the saturation current for the NMOS is Kn into V input minus V threshold N all square. And in the PMOS it's Kp over two into Vgs, which is V input minus Vdd minus V threshold P square. Now we'll take a square root on uh, the two sides and we end up with square root Kn over Kp into V input minus V threshold N. It's equal to plus or minus V input minus Vdd minus V threshold P. Now V input is equal to Vm and we have two solutions because we have plus or minus. We are going to accept only the negative solution because it is the solution that gives us a positive value for Vm. And so simplifying, we end up with square root Kn over Kp plus one Vm. And on the other side, we have Vdd minus V threshold P plus V threshold P uh, minus plus V threshold N square root Kn over Kp. And so this gives us a final value for Vm, the logic threshold, which is equal to Vdd plus V threshold n square root Kn over Kp plus V threshold P, 
Just to aid, aid us in like visualizing what VM or v, where VM lies, we will use minus absolute value V threshold P because V threshold P is a negative number. This is divided by one plus square root KN over KP. Now, we usually want VM, which is kind of the uh, point which um, delineates the difference between input one and input zero. We want it to be halfway through between output one and output zero. So we want it to be halfway between VDD and, and zero volt in the case of the CMOS inverter. This allows noise margin high, noise margin low to be uh, roughly equal. Recall that this range is noise margin high and that this range is noise margin low. And so to make them equal, we have to have VM lie in the middle. And so it's usually um, good to have VM equals to VDD over two. For that to happen, KN must be equal to KP. And this would guarantee that the two Threshold voltages will cancel out if they are equal to each other in terms of magnitude and that we are dividing by two. Now for Kn to be equal to Kp, um, W over Ln times mu n must be equal to W over Lp times mu p. But we do know that mu n and mu p are not equal. In fact, we are going to use uh, mu n equals to mu p, which is an approximation. But in that case, then W over Lp must be equal to 2 W over L N. And so what this tells us is that if we want VM to be uh, right in the middle, smack in the middle, VDD over 2, then we have to make the P MOS transistor in the CMOS inverter double the size of the N MOS uh, transistor. And this is to compensate the P MOS for the fact that its carriers are bad. Its carriers, the holes, have lower mobility than the carriers in N MOS, the electrons. So this is how to find VM. How do we find the input high and the input low? It's actually quite simple. First, we start with the KCL equation. KIN is equal to IP. And again, we are looking for the regions of operation. So it's obvious that for the input high, the region of operation would be ohmic sat, where the PMOS is ohmic and the NMOS is sat. And for the input high, the regions of operation will be sat ohmic, where the PMOS is sat and the NMOS is ohmic. So that's, that's you know, Let's say we are trying to find the value of V input high. So in this case, the N MOS is going to be, uh, is going to be uh, ohmic, and the P MOS is going to be saturated. And so we start with these regions of operation, and we write down the current equations. So the ohmic current in N MOS is Kn into V input minus V threshold N, V output minus V out square over 2. And the saturation current in P MOS is Kp over 2 into uh, VGS, which is V input minus VDD, minus V threshold P all square. Now, this is an equation in two unknowns. And what it does is it describes the shape of the curve in this range, the range where the two transistors are ohmic set. So it describes an entire range of, of transistor of, of, of operation, either this curve or this curve, depending on whether we used ohmic set or set ohmic. But we want to find a specific point. But that point has a property that we have not used yet, which is that the slope is equal to minus one. And so there's a property dV output by dV input equals minus one that we have not used yet. To make use of it, we have to make dV out by dV input make an appearance. And so we differentiate this equation, equation one, with respect to V input. And so we end up with Kn into V out plus V in minus V threshold N into V output dash minus V out V output dash. This is equal to Kp over two into V input minus VDD minus V threshold P. Now we also have to uh, substitute that V output dash is equal to minus one because this is what, um, what is specific to this point. This would give us equation two. Now equation one and equation two are in two unknowns, V input and V output. So we solve one and two. And at this point, it's good to substitute for numerical values and just solve the two equations simultaneously. And so we solve these two equations for specifically V input. So we don't actually need V output. We just need to solve for V input. And so this gives us the value of V input high. If we were obtaining the, the, the value of V input low, all that we'd have to do is 
all, you know, the only difference would have been that we would have started out with an equation where the NMOS was saturated and the PMOS was ohmic, and then we would have gone through the same exact same steps. And so we end up with a value of V input high that is rather low, a value for V input low that is rather high. Both of them are kind of close to Vm, and so V input high, V input low, and Vm are kind of close to each other, which means that the transition region is narrow. And finally, we can prove that the noise margins for CMOS are excellent. They are better than, they're definitely better than a ratio logic. In fact, they are better than any family we can think of.